continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. And Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. churchyard can be as bleak as any other, but those who lie here have passed beyond their burdens. Catherine Harrington was buried some days ago. The cause of her death remains an unanswered question. And even in their sorrow, the Harringtons cannot comfort one another. up early went to school. How is he? Dad, don't you know? I'm thinking of taking you up to the lodge, both of you. We have classes. During vacation, we could spend a couple of weeks up there. I'd close the house. Do we have to close the house? Don't you want to? What does Betty want? I don't know. What do you think she wants? Dad, I don't know. Well, what does she say? We don't talk. I mean, how can you talk through closed doors? Well, open them enough to talk. I don't want to open them. Just enough to talk. Rod. What do you want? I don't know. I want her out of this house. Good morning. Don't get up. I wasn't getting up, I was going out to class. You don't have to explain. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Ron. Why are you going on with this? With what, Mr. Harrington? Why are you living here? Oh. Well, why? Rod lives here. I'm Rod's wife. In name only. Isn't that true? What would you call me before I became Rod's wife? What would you name me, Mr. Harrington? I don't think that does you credit, Betty. Or Rod. We're talking about you. Shouldn't we talk about Rod, too? Or my mother? Is that it? No, Mr. Harrington, that's not it. It's only part of it. It is made up of a lot of things. One of them is me. You've made me feel cheap, all of you. All right, Betty. What's your price? You're still looking for a price tag, aren't you, Mr. Harrington? What can you gain by staying on in this house? It's an impossible marriage, isn't it? Impossible? It is a marriage. And from what I've seen of marriage, it's a very possible one. Be honest with me, Betty, and with yourself. Can Rod forgive you for trapping him, for lying about a child when there is no child? Can I forgive you for doing this to my son? Give Rodney the divorce he wants. Why make him miserable and yourself miserable? Are you going to suggest again I leave Peyton Place? Are you going to give me money to go to New York? Is that it? Money. You know my wife's will is going to be read. Are you waiting to find out what Rod will inherit? Oh, I am learning how to live. I am being taught by experts. You know, Mr. Harrington, 
Maybe I'm going to learn enough to teach you something. You're a very foolish girl, Betty. Now be smart. Forget about what your Boston lawyer told you. Divorce Rodney. I'm not divorcing Rodney. I'm going to remain Mrs. Harrington. Mrs. Harrington? And someday I mean to have a very serious talk with you. Mm -hmm. yep. You're a serious girl, aren't you, Allison? Because I am. Yeah. Why did you ask me that? Well, there aren't many serious girls now. Oh, I think there are, Mr. Anderson. More than you know. Uh, I don't see them. They skitter. Mr. Anderson. Well, perhaps it's better to skitter, Allison. To skitter and skim. Like those little water bugs. Do you ever see them on the surface of a pond? Yes. They skitter and skim. All day beautiful wife and secretary. Wife and secretary, all in one. And what do you think I've got here, huh? What do you think Big George is going to produce? Not from thin air, no, sir, but right here. Signed, sealed, and delivered. <laughs> oh, Julie, I really sold that guy. <laughs> yeah, and over a couple of hamburgers, if you please. We weren't even drinking. <laughs> okay, Miss Pessimist. How about a big kiss, huh? How about a little applause from the grandstand? George, George, I am proud of you. <laughs> uh, all right, say it. Who was right all along, huh? <laughs> Everything's looking up, baby. Well, did you uh, talk to Betty? Yes. Uh -huh. What'd she say? Well, she's still there. <laughs> you bet she is. That's where she's gonna stay. You know what counts with a man, Julie? when he has a woman who's crazy about him. Do you remember us when we were their age? Yes. Uh, you bet you do. <laughs> it's when a woman looks down on a man. Makes him feel small. That's when she loses out. You better sign this, George. Yeah. Anyhow, a kid like that who can go and get a lawyer all on her own. Now, that's the kind of girl to put the money on. Yes, sir. Oh, George. Julie. Liz. Now, this is quite an honor. Well, how do you like the office? Very impressive, George. I'm glad you're both here. It's time we had a talk, the three of us. About what? Your daughter and my son. Oh. Take Les's coat, Julie. Oh, I'm all right, Julie. I'm going to be very honest about this. Is this going to be a long story, Les? A short story. Betty needs some good advice. She won't listen to me, so I'm asking you to talk sense to her. While there's still time. Time? To do what? Avoid a lot of unpleasantness. I'm asking you to persuade her to do the decent thing. Give Rod a divorce. Has he grounds? You're not going to do it, are you, George? No. I'm going to stand behind my daughter. Maybe I shouldn't blame her for tricking the boy. She's learned too much from you, George. I don't like to hear you say that, Les. George, please, Les. I'm sorry, Julie. All right, let's stick to the point. 
Yes, let, uh, let me see, where were we? Oh, yes, I asked you a simple little question. Has he grounds for divorce? Her lawyer says no, but I haven't consulted my lawyer yet. He may disagree. Oh, is that a threat? Yes. See you in court. <laughs> I'll say this about you, George. You were never one to do the decent thing. Please, don't leave it like this. I know it isn't the way we'd like it, but do we have to fight and go into court, spread our lives out for people to... people to look at? Why shouldn't we, Julie? Look, we were children together, the three of us. Look at us now, arguing over our own children. I'm sorry, Julie. Well, maybe I can't defend Betty for everything she's done, but is Rod without blame? Are we? I'm not trying to blame anyone. Look, all I'm asking for is a little time for Betty, for Rod, too. Oh, Les, there's always time to break up a marriage. Please wait. Wait. All right, we'll see. <laughs> oh, boy, boy, boy. Oh, you sure have a way with a man, Julie. <laughs> what did you say, George? Yeah, one minute he's in here throwing his weight around, making threats. The next minute he's gazing into your baby brown eyes and he collapses like an accordion. <laughs> A husband doesn't like to see his wife making up to another man, Julie. Making up? George, I was trying to protect Betty. She doesn't need you to protect her. She can do it herself. Julie, I'm no fool. Catherine's dead. Less is free, but you're not. So don't you get any ideas about him? None. None at all. Ever did like these X-rays? Figure what you don't know can't hurt you. Well, you know you have some pain, Mr. Carson. Sure, but I can live with it. No, you can't. Dr. Rossi, this comes at a bad time for me. I'm talking about my son. If Elliot gets his parole, he'll be coming home. Is that worrying you? I might. Why? Are you afraid of something, Mr. Carson? Well, why should you ask that? You act afraid. You may think I have no right to ask that question, but as your physician who's trying to help you, I believe I do. And as the man living at the house where Elliot's wife was murdered? Yes, that too. He has his rights too. The right to try to find the man who really did kill her. What if he doesn't find that man? Could happen. What if there is no such man? We just have to wait and see. Mr. Carson, are you afraid your son Elliot is guilty? He says he isn't, and I've never known him to lie to me. Yes? Dr. Morton's secretary's on the phone. He'd like to see you at 11 o'clock. Do you want to talk to her? No, just uh, tell her I'll be there. Well, I'm going to ask you to take it easy meanwhile, Mr. Carson. I will. Goodbye, doctor. Goodbye. Is anyone else out there? No. I'm sure everything will be all right. Are you, Laura? You have a lot of faith in Peyton Place. No. Faith in you, Doctor. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. Well, you're a fine doctor, and I... I think you know what else I was going to say. Well, all right. Are you leaving now? Yes, sir. I can't stay around here. I'm no good at waiting. Thank you. Did I embarrass you? No. No, but... You're embarrassed now. Laura, I'd like to keep on appreciating. Well, that's a delicate way of putting it. Oh, I didn't mean that to sound harsh. Well, it doesn't, but... Ah, oh, there it is again, that word, but. 
I'm sorry. Good luck at the hospital. Thank you. Books. I have an exam. Would you like a little something on the fall of the Roman Empire? No, thanks. It sure took a long time to fall. This much is only up to Marcus Aurelius. They were a wicked lot, Dr. Rossi. Even he threw people to the lions. It's a sport that hadn't died yet. Would you like to come in for a minute? But... I'll take this one, Constance. If she doesn't like it, she can exchange it. Hello. Hello. Well, somebody's going to have a busy evening. Uh, the exam's not till Friday. Hello, Mrs. Lincoln. You're such a little student, Allison. I'm sure you always get an A. Last time I got a C. Oh. Well, do better next time. Uh, gift wrap it, will you please, Constance? And I'll come back. All right, Mrs. Lincoln. Goodbye. Why does everyone always think I'm an egghead? What would you rather have them think? that I'm dumb and irresistible. Well, look at us. We're nice and bright. And who wants us? Even Dr. Rossi just barked at me. Oh? Well, he's upset about the hearing. You think he's right, don't you? Yes. Because he is or because you like him? You're romantic, Allison. Maybe I get it from you. OK, you marry Dr. Rossi, and I'll go to India and help emancipate the women. He was upset, huh? Did he say where he was going? Don't worry. He'll call you and tell you about it. Mm -hmm. All right, fine. Can you send him right down, please? Thank you. Dr. Morton. Early, Dr. Rossi. Well, being early, Dr. Morton's a lifetime habit. Really? Let's uh, go to my office. A model of the first dolphin built right here in Peyton Place in 1830. It's beautiful. Old things often are. People were less impatient in those days. They didn't leap into things as we do. They counseled with themselves and with others. No blemishes, Dr. Morton. I didn't suggest that. You have a tendency to make quick assumptions, Dr. Rossi. I've asked you to come in for a special reason. Shall we discuss the virtues and blemishes of our ancestors some other time? I'm agreeable. Thank you. The board, which has looked into the death of Mrs. Harrington, has finished its investigation and come to certain conclusions. But can we come to some conclusions too, Dr. Morton? Her letter is in the mail. I thought it more courteous to tell you its contents personally. I see. The board, Dr. Rossi, finds that the operation was unnecessary. Based on what? Let's not raise our voices, Dr. Rossi. Well, let's not be too polite either, Dr. Morton. I repeat, based on what? You know as well as I, on the autopsy performed by the pathologist. Contrary to your diagnosis, Dr. Bradley did not find the duodenum was perforating or was even in any danger of perforating. I heard Dr. Bradley's report at the hearing. I didn't believe it then. I don't believe it now. You have a right to your opinion. We have a right to ours. Unfortunately, ours is based on scientific fact. Yours is not. Dr. Morton, am I being charged with incompetence? Does it have to be put that way, Dr. Why Rossi? mince words? I'm not quite finished. Would you please sit down? I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but the board has decided reluctantly to suspend your privileges. You will no longer be permitted to admit patients to this hospital or to treat them here. You support that action? Well, I have no choice. I'm performing an unpleasant duty, Dr. Rossi. I didn't have to see you. It's the usual procedure to send a letter to the interested party. 
All right, let's talk about usual procedure. It's the usual procedure to have the doctor present that requested the autopsy, isn't it? You were notified. Yes, and I requested a delay to take care of a patient. We have our schedules. You told me about the schedule. What you didn't tell me about is why I can't see Dr. Bradley, why he is not available for a few pertinent questions. Pertinent? Or impertinent? That's a very clever play on words, Doctor. But I think you'll agree it has no place here. What we're talking about now is serious, at least it is to me. What we're talking about now is a gross violation of usual procedure. What we're talking about is a complete neglect for common courtesies. You're not acting like a responsible physician. You're acting even less like a responsible chief of staff at a hospital. I think you ought to know this, Dr. Morton. I am going to find out why. why she named me one of the executors of her will? No. Until the day I had no idea she'd appointed you. I thought you might have. No, I'm afraid not. Well, goodbye, Matt. See you tomorrow. All right. been neglecting me. Well, you've been busy and so have I. I know. You didn't stand up for Mike at the hearing, did you? Well, I think he did a pretty good job of standing up for himself. What's going to happen? His hospital privileges are suspended. That means? That means that he can't use hospital facilities. You let that happen, Matt. Well, there wasn't much I could do about it. The pathologist's report was pretty specific. You voted against him. No, I didn't say that. The board voted to suspend privileges, and I don't think I should tell you how I voted. It wouldn't be fair to the others. Besides, there's something else that I have to talk to you about. Elliot Carson. He's being given another hearing by his parole board soon. His lawyer called me just now. He wants me to appear as a character witness. Why you, Matt? Well, for many reasons. One, I've known Elliot a long time, and I suppose I have a good reputation. I'm going to see him before the end of the week. Why? Well, I want to talk to him before I testify. Then you will testify. Wouldn't you want me to? You do want him free. Would he come back here? Very likely. What about Allison? I'm afraid to see him, Matt, especially now. I am afraid. Not only for myself. Well, his lawyer feels he has a pretty good chance this time, and I think you better prepare yourself. You may be facing Elliot soon. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. I loved her, Laura. Then what happened, Les? We got married. This isn't a marriage. I'm Mrs. Rodney Harrington, and I'm going to stay Mrs. Rodney Harrington. Don't count on it. There's nothing I can do for Michael Rossi. Wouldn't it be more simple if you just let them drive him out of town? Mm -hmm. 